All right, so to begin, we're first going to throw everything on our timeline. The one little thing that I would recommend doing before you actually jump into Fusion is getting some audio cues. I'm actually gonna go over to Epidemic Sound. If you're interested, you can go over there, you can get a free trial. There's a link in the description for it. Uh, they do throw a little bit back my way to support the channel. Now that I have my little sound effect, which is right here, that's the sound effect that we're gonna be using. We're gonna just drag it down and we're going to kind of space this out uh, to kind of fit our needs. Next, we're gonna select all of the video tracks we're gonna use as a reference for this animation. Then we're gonna hold down Alt and we're just going to drag up to another video track. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to turn this into what is referred to by right clicking a new fusion comp or clip. That's going to enable us to do is make this whole animation and have the animation on a separate video track. Anytime we have to add any type of color work to our background footage, we can do that without affecting these particular animations. And then once we do that, we're now going to jump into Fusion. Once we're in Fusion, one thing that I like to do is come up here to Clips. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna make sure that we're actually on the Fusion clip. Uh, so now that we're in here, we can close this and we can start to build this out. And what I found to be the easiest for this sort of an animation is taking a text node and we're just going to make it vertical just like a phone screen. So to do this, we're gonna come over into the image tab, turn off auto resolution, 1080, 1920. Now that we have it vertical, we're gonna come over into text and I'm just gonna type in a little hey and have it anchored to the left. All of the text, even if it's multi-line, is always going to be anchored to the left, even though that the chat bubble might expand and the chat bubble itself is anchored to the right or to the left, depending on who's talking, but the text in the bubble is always anchored to the left. The next thing that we're going to be adding is we're gonna come over into shading and maybe I should actually show this by making this a multi-line is we're gonna come over into shading and we're going to be adding a second shading element. Adding a second shading element, if I zoom in on this, we're gonna see that it's currently just doing an outline. We don't want that, we actually want it to be the background. Each individual letter has a little box, so instead of that, what we're actually gonna come down to is this level and we're gonna switch this over to text. Then we can throw on a little bit of rounding. Obviously, you don't wanna go too much and we can expand this a bit so that we have a little more breathing room on the sides. We actually might wanna come in and switch up the colors. Next, we're gonna come up to workspace and we're gonna switch this over into middle flow. And why I'm gonna do this is because this is vertical and it just makes things a little easier to work with while we're uh, adding all of these elements in. So we're gonna do that and then just move this over a little bit so we have a little bit of room over here. I like to come into here and go into guides and we're going to turn the default guides on. The bubbles are gonna be anchored left or right and now we have a guide to make sure that they all line up. And we're gonna move this right up to the top just like that and right over here. And the first one is not actually going to say that, it's just going to say, hey. So there we are. Let's slide this over. I'm just going to copy this and click over here and paste. And then we can just connect these both up. How they're connected doesn't really matter because they're not overlapping at all. Next in here, we're just going to type in our next little bit. And we're gonna bring this over. Actually, this is going to be from the same person. Copy and paste, gonna have it over here. So now let's view this. This one is actually going to come over here and down, but we're gonna switch up the bubble color. Now that we have that, we have our left and our right. So now we can just keep copying this one and we'll always have that color there. So I'm just going to copy the gray one and we're gonna add the gray one in again. All right, view this over here and we'll drop this down. Now you can add the little details of like times and different things like that. But for now, I just want this to be super simple. Now that we have that, we actually want to view this. So here is our actual video here. And if I come into the keyframes, we can see once we listen to this, we can see all of our uh, little waveform here. This is gonna come in through the media in when we can see that. So now we have a good way to cue our animation. So I guess we could actually just do that now. Let's just, you know, stick with what we were doing and get this queuing up. So now I can, you know, just bring this over and that's where it's going to queue in. The first one of, hey, coming over into light, uh, layout, we're gonna click and that's gonna be when it's actually going to be in. So I'm just going to come back a couple of frames and we're just going to slide that out. Other thing that I like to do is coming over into settings and turning on motion blur. So we have a little bit of a motion blur as it comes on screen. All right, so now that we view this, 
I'm just going to have that fit screen. And because it's obviously a lot taller uh, in this merge here, I can back it out a little bit. All of these animations, because they're outside, we're still gonna be able to see them. So the easiest way to clean up something like this is I like to just grab a background. I'm gonna hit F2 and say, and make this say blank. And then in the inspector, I'm gonna turn all of these to zero. I want it to be completely transparent. And we're gonna have this go into the background of the merge for all of these elements. In this uh, background, flip the resolution again as well, right? So we want it to match everything else. So it's just like that. We can come back into our merge, set this size back to normal, and we're just going to connect up and make this go full. Now, coming out of all of this, if we were to connect it up like we had it previous, whoops, like we had it previously, and make this a little smaller, and let's come in so we can see this. Now, when they're sliding out, we don't see them, and as time goes on, we can see them sliding in. So now the only thing that we really need to do is we need to figure out where we want this to be positioned. Simply just take this and put this in a corner or you can make it a little fancier, but I just wanted to uh, quickly do something else here with 3D. This isn't something that's super necessary. It is going to add a little extra to our render times, but we're just going to add it in here. And we're actually going to be viewing, let's go back to our old view that we had before, the default. All we're gonna do is animate the camera left and right and rotate the messages accordingly. Might wanna tighten those up a little bit, but that's pretty much the idea here. I'm just going to click on both of these, come up here and just make sure that we have show only selected since I selected both of these. Gonna click to see just both of those and we're going to clean these up just a little bit. Sliding these in, I'm holding down Alt and I'm just going to add a little bit of easing to make this a little smoother on the transition. I actually think I'm going to move this particular one back to when we get a camera shift. And shift is going to allow us to move them in time, but not the actual values. Something like that. The only other thing I think I would do is probably drop this down so it was down like that that you could add if you really wanted to. In the 3D space, all of this stuff is moving back and forth. We can also add motion blur to this. You only have to add it to this end node because it's the only one that's actually doing the rendering. All of the others are just parameters to go into the 3D scene itself. So now when, when the camera moves uh, left to right, we'll get that little bit of motion blur um, from side to side. So then because we have all of this, the only other thing that we're gonna have to change here is we used a merge to pull down everything. Now you could do this in the 3D scene, but sometimes, you know, an afterthought of doing something like this, it's just a little easier to add a node after. Um, you could do this one of two ways. One, you could take it to the edit page and we could pull it down. And I, that's what we're actually gonna do. Or you could add in a transform node. So because this right now, is 1920, 1080, we can just push this to the timeline and then in the timeline tools, we can then bring that image down. So that's what we're gonna end up doing. Um, so we're just going to drag this, oh, I don't know why there's another merge there. We're just gonna drag this to the media out, right? So out of this render, right into the media out. So we want our end product to be transparent with just the animation itself. So now if we come back over here, we have it and it looks great. Now in this uh, particular fusion clip, we can now take this position and drag the position down, or you could use the on-screen controls as you can see here and we can move it around, but we're just going to drag it down just about there. If we were to come over to the color page, we have all of our clips here and I can go into all of these clips. I'm just gonna dra drastically change the color on them it's never going to affect our actual animation. If we were to add all of these animations onto the actual video clips, instead of having them as their own video track, then all of these big color changes would apply to these uh, text bubbles as well. And that's obviously not what you wanna do. You want them to be separated so that we don't have to do anything with them. I kinda stopped and I was like, you know what? Let's add some uh, date and time and stuff. I think it's something like that. Let's uh, center that. I think it's something like that. And just to add some extra to make it look cool, we will have it start at zero. 
and over a couple of frames, we'll have it go to one. Like that. After all of this, we can do a transform. And for each of the sounds, we're actually going to have it slide right here. Now, what does this look like? In the final render. Okay, it's there, right? So perfect. Obviously, you can, you know, do this however you like. Where's the final? The final is like right there. A little keyframe. Come back a little bit. Like that. Come up. And then we'll bring this up to that line again. And I think that that kind of concludes this tutorial. It's not super difficult. I did have a question on creating something like this. It's not hard. You could add the little um, images of your contact information set as. You could put timestamps in if you wanted to. You could put the little animation of someone texting. You could do all of that. And I feel like the biggest takeaway from this is just knowing that you have to make it into a separate video track so that when you do go to color it, you're not also coloring these animations. So that kind of concludes this one. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know in the comments if you did or didn't. Uh, but with that being said, my name's Jarrett. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.